Okay, so we are starting the good afternoon. We are starting the fifth session, and uh, we will start with um, the um, paper written by uh, Chen Yan from the University of Waterloo. Uh, title is Restructuring Urban Form Through Restructuring Accessibility and Integrating Urban Network Approach. So, when you when you're gonna start, Chen? Yes, everything is working, I think. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, go on. Okay, I'm gonna start. I apologize for that. <laughs> I have a baby at home, sorry. <laughs> okay, good uh, afternoon, everyone. So my name is Chen Yang and uh, I'm currently a PhD candidate at the School of Planning, University of Wallu. And uh, I had a background in architecture and I actually worked as an architect in Shanghai for two years. So it is our great pleasure to present our work Restructuring Urban Form Through Restructuring Accessibility and Integrated Urban Network Approach. So first of all, we apologize for not able to attend the a symposium in person, but we thank the organizers for their work and the best wishes for a successful uh, symposium. So first off, I would like to share why uh, we conducted this research. So the subject of urban morphology deals with main physical elements that structure and shape the city, urban tissues, streets, urban plots, buildings, to name the most important. But one of the most important observation, uh, uh, one interesting observation of the existing literature um, is that there's a glaring omission of the underground morphological yeah. elements in the understanding of interplay between physical structure and human activities. And this is much more problematic, especially when it comes to met policies whose underground <laughs> space is highly developed. And the uh, underground space includes many functional spatial elements such as metro systems, pedestrian underpasses, underground spaces of shopping malls and office buildings, and other functional spaces. And materials uh, underground city is representative of this space. Uh, the research objective of this. <laughs> So this research is not intended to provide a comprehensive analytic framework of underground morphology, rather it serves as an entry point for further research in this realm. So this work <laughs> pays special attention to metro system, especially its function of spatial collection that facilitates direct connections between relatively distant locations. So this research adopts space syntax to examine how the mantra system contributes to the existing urban form through reinforcing accessibility. So in addition, it seeks to highlight the importance of incorporating on-ground morphological elements in modeling urban form to make inform inform informative design and plan decisions. So this map shows this this map shows the research area. Uh, so we look at the city of Xi'an in China. So city of Xi'an literally means the Western Peace, the capital city of Shanxi province, and is located at the Guangzhou Plain in northwestern China. The city of Xi'an is also home to uh, several famous ancient uh, dealers, uh, capital city of uh, capitals that dating back to the 11th century BC. And uh, you can see the boundary line. Uh, as shown in the black dashed lines, indicate the second ring road of Xi'an. And the areas inside uh, is primarily the old city of Xi'an, which covers an area of 87 kilometers, uh, square kilometers, sorry. And on this account, we prepared our street network and metro network of Xi'an based on the data we retrieved from OpenStreetMap and using plugins in the QGRS. So in order to avoid the edge effects, we prepared both networks with extensions outside the boundary, and this specific boundary is determined on the consideration of PARC's uh, 2009 recommendation on boundary selection to refrain from edge effects. Uh, this is a, a, a diagram of the workflow of this research. So, 
So best deal we constructed two uh, networks. First one is three network. The other one is integrate network uh, that merges the metro network and S3 network. And we performed spacing tech analysis. So, and we also uh, collected the POI data uh, to, ref to, to kind of as a proxy of the socioeconomic activities of the surrounding areas. So, uh, yeah, we we specify we we also specify the oh no this is the second so we use the segment analysis uh, in particular and specify the ra radius at uh, 400 meters, 800 meters, 1,200 meters, and n to examine the structure at different scales from local to global. So we use the two most widely used and credible indicators of the analysis output being normalized angular choice, which is NACH and the normalized angular integration, which is NAIN. So in principle, the NACH value corresponds with the movement flows through spaces, and the NAIN value indicates the degree to which people clustered at special location. So therefore, the former can be used to predict human movement patterns, and the latter can be employed to identify urban core areas. And we also performed a special join in QGIS to calculate the sum of POIs within 400 meters, sorry, within 400 meters, uh, around five minutes work of each metro station. And then we used a bivariate correlation analysis to validate which lab work fits more closely to the real intensity of socioeconomic activities as reflected through POIs uh, at 36 metro stations. So as one thing I would like to mention here is that the method of constructing integrated lab work, so we actually borrowed the method of creating uh, the lab work from law at all 2012, but with a few updates to better suit our case. So law at all used a short segment and the metro stations to link two lab works. We also use this tactic, but take advantage of particular intersections as a natural links where we did not specify the onlink point in onlink layers. So here we present different steps of the constru uh, of constructing the special model. So, uh, basically, we construct axial model and transform it into segment model, and then we specify the onlink layer, and we have the integrated uh, network, and uh, you have uh, we also have have the spatial distribution of the POIs which are the uh, green points. Uh, here I would like to briefly introduce the results, but uh, please see our paper for a detailed interpretations. So this is the result of the NACH output, basically is a choice map. So from left to right, we consider three radius of N, 400 meters and 1,200 meters as micro, meso, and micro scales, respectively. So, at a macro scale, uh, when you compare figure A to figure D, you can see human movement patterns are significantly influenced or reinforced by the metro networks. And uh, at the uh, uh, meso scale, when you compare figure C to figure F, so we find that uh, when dealing with analysis with a radius larger than 1,200 meters, the metro network's contribution to the overall system is limited. Sorry, I don't know how. And uh, as for the micro scale, when you compared figure B to figure E, the, well, we have the conclusion that the metro network may even have negative impacts on the whole system. If we look closely at the inner city, Many red lines disappear, which suggests a decrease in uh, the NACH value. And this is a map for uh, this is this is uh, an answer results for the uh, integration map. So uh, when you when uh, at the macro scale, so think you could say since it only makes sense to consider metro stations in the uh, metro related network, uh, we here by interpret the uh, NAIA map based on the proposed concept of red cross node highlight in the black circle in figure D. So you can see this highlight uh, the, the, the black circles. 
So basically, uh, in traditional math syntax, when you try to uh, interpret uh, uh, integration map, you always consider the integration code, which are the uh, red lines clusters. But uh, in the if we if we consider the in integrated network, uh, as I mentioned, it 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 only makes sense to consider metro stations because the uh, uh, the the metro lines you don't have is inaccessible to people. So this concept only works for the global scale analysis since uh, such nodes are not seen on the maps. And uh, when uh, at the meso scale, uh, when you compare uh, figure C to fig F, so similar to the NSH results at the meso scale, the metro network only has limited effects on the road network. Yet the metro networks in fig F is more integrated into the road network compared to that in the figure F in NACH results, as fewer blue lines are displayed. While it is hard to provide theoretical accounts for this examination based on the existing data, we deducted that this is because of the functional synchrony between what? functional synchrony between the metro network and the functional attractors specially dispersed in cities, especially with spatial spacing of around 1,200 meters. And the results of uh, um, the, the of uh, NAIA at 400 meters, which is the micro and local scale, uh, report the same findings to that of the NSH. Uh, that is, considering the potential effects of the metro network at the local scale is not necessary. And then we use the star models proposed by Helier uh, 2012 to help construct a quantitative understanding of the two networks based on our based on the comparative analysis. So basically, the star model, the means, which is a vertical X, represents the background network, and the maximum, which is a horizontal X, represents the foreground network. Uh, you can see from uh, there's a more a deep discussions in Hitler's publications 2014 and 2016. So as you can see from um, figure A, so it is evident that uh, our model's foreground is much stronger than the background, which is consistent with Hitler's finding of Beijing. So basically Xi'an and Beijing are all traditional uh, ancient capital cities of China that has that have similar uh, uh, urban form and a special structure. And uh, when you, there are slight increases in both NAIA max and NSH max in uh, figure B and in contrast to figure A, whereas there are small decreases between uh, figure D and C as well as figure F and E. So such changes imply that the integrated network, while reinforcing the foreground at a macro scale, weakening the fo foreground uh, background at the meso and the particular the micro, uh, micro micro scale. So in other words, the integrated system is conducive to city level planning, but such planning may undermine the local neighborhoods. So this reminds up, uh, uh, us of the uh, a battle between Jan Jacobs and Robert Moses in the 1960s US. So that uh, that means that the planning aims for a city overall structure may not serve the people in small neighborhoods. So of the final stage of this uh, preliminary research is to investigate whether the proposed integrated network can have practical usage in informing urban design and planning practices. So we performed a bivariate correlation between the output of space index and the intensity of socioeconomic activities, uh, the POIs. Um, so then what do these significant correlations imply? So our interpretation points to a suitable scale for the selection of models. As we argued above, the integrated network best captures the urban spatial structure at the macro scale. Radiance at N may partially explain the structure at the meso scale, radius around 1,200 meters. 
and completely dysfunctions at the micro scale, in radius at 400 meters. Uh, then why the model matters? Why we need an integrated model in, in contrast to the uh, traditional the uh, uh, street network model? So we should revisit hideous concept of dual structure generic city. So basically in max cities, the transit system, especially the ra rapid railway system has become an essential tool for collecting with expanding urban areas. So the development of the foreground is driven mainly by microeconomics, so in traditional urban morphology studies, the foreground system tends to remain stable and durable throughout history, like axial uh, avenue of a city. Because there's a because of the difficulty in promoting massive reconstruction to the foreground system, they have become the symbol of city. However, by incorporating metro lines into the morphological system, the path of metro lines becomes an integral part of the foreground system. So the key point is that metro lines are rapidly expanding in many fast developing cities, including many max cities, China, Fiji cities, in other developing countries. So this formula challenges the existing epistemology adopted by space text researchers as well as urban, for urban morphologists in broad terms. Uh, I guess there are three takeaways, uh, main takeaways of this research. First, uh, with the development of subway facilities in urban areas, and more people travel patterns will be impacted by the availability of transit systems uh, services. Other than locations of metro stations are predefined, the human flow directed by the metro network is bound to influence intensity of socioeconomic activities around such nodes. As our quantitative results suggest, the existing urban spatial structure is reinforced by the metro structure. And second, the integrated network is more applicable for the analysis and macro scale. So uh, we can conclude that the threshold for an effective integrated network may be hinged upon the average distance between two metro stations in reality. And in our case, it is between uh, 1.21 kilometers to 1.43 kilometers. So this should be a prerequisite in applying the integrated network in urban modeling. Uh, furthermore, the metro network may even have negative impacts on the road network on the local scale, as we indicated above. An integrated view may be conducive to a city level planning, but may disrupt local neighborhoods. And third, uh, we, got, we argue that the metro network is an essential component of cities foreground. The foreground of cities is often considered as the historical legacy that is less likely on the reformation. However, in many emerging cities, the embracement the, of the railway system has been underway. And this microeconomic force that drives the restructuring of cities' spatial structure warrants heightened attention. Um, so therefore, uh, we believe the integrated network may create discrete uh, patterns and lead talent interpretation in contrast to traditional explanations based on color pattern created by space syntax. Uh, that's the end of the uh, presentation and uh, we thank you for your attention. Because we did not cover much of the interpretations, you can refer to our paper for more detailed discussion. And uh, we do have some, uh, some uh, relative relative previous publications. You can also find, uh, if you are interested, you can explore uh, relevant content in those two publications. And uh, for their questions and requiries, please contact me directly. And thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to your comments, questions. Thank you.